Hello, this is the sales screen. In the sales screen, I'm going to go through the details uh, from left top to the lower bottom. The sales screen uh, has a inventory, customer, and main menu uh, link that will take you to those screens. If you're using this on a browser, you have the commit and revert buttons that are used to save and then or revert back to take out the changes you might have made. There is a sales ID, which is the invoice ID. At the very top of the screen, there's a tag that you can tag the date of this invoice if you need to. On the actual buttons down here, on the, or first of all, down on here on customer information, what you're doing is assigning a customer from the customer screen to this invoice. There's a drop down list that allows you to pick the client from the list. All you have to do is type in the first few letters of the customer's first name and it'll bring up that list. This is true throughout all the drop downs in the, in the uh, application where that is done. It'll automatically, when you pick it, will fill in these records uh, fields. If you use the plus and minus arrows, it'll move through the records. This is forward and backward through the records. When you're adding a new record, uh, the new record will leave everything blank when you go ahead and uh, click the button and you proceed by adding the information from top to the bottom. You can edit in the screen if you had to, but normally when you come in here, there's uh, not that much to do. I mean, there's very few inputs that are required. Uh, the do find and perform find buttons, clicking on the do find will empty all the fields out and put in question marks in all the fields. In that process, all you need to do is either pick a client or pick one of the records in the top up here because you cannot add rec or searches to the portal records in the portal. But any of the records above there and up here, you can go ahead and put in a uh, piece of information that's, that will match whatever you're looking for in a record. And it'll automatically, when you press the perform find, it'll either bring up the data or it'll give you an error message that you put the wrong information in that doesn't uh, find anything in the record. The next thing is the show all records. What this does is if you've done a find, you'll only have a set of records that are matching the find. And if you try to move through the record, you're going to find that you cannot find but the ones that are in the found set. So you have to click on the show all records again to bring back all the records to the database that are in the entire set of records. The main menu uh, button will take you back to the main menu. The first set of rows, again, is a repeat of the uh, sales ID. Now, these cannot be edited. They're automatically put in by the computer, so you can't edit them. It will also put in the exact time, uh, clock time of the invoice when it was created with a new record button and the date. And this is kind of a management type of thing where people, if they're going to try to uh, modify the record itself, on a new uh, entry. This is not editable so that you can tell exactly when the invoice was created. And if there's a difference between the pick date where you actually put in the date for the invoice and the time when you type in the time, these two differences will probably raise a question if they're not close to the same thing. And in this case, they were close to the same thing. They were identical. The next thing you're going to do is put in the store ID. Now, in this case, in this app, there's six stores. And I put in some fictitious names for made up names for them. When you pick the name from the drop down list, it'll automatically go ahead and fill in this field. It also fills in the actual invoice data. It will change the logo. In this case, I just put some placeholders in there. But each time you move between records, say, for example, I go back to one, you can see that the data will change as far as the look, uh, logo is concerned. Then in the salesperson, uh, you would have all the salespeople for all the stores in this list, and you can edit this, this list by clicking on the, uh, or going to the salesman record, and then go ahead and bringing in or editing that record. Uh, the sales locations are the same way. If you click on this, it'll take you to the salesman sales location screen, so you can either review or add a new record for a new store. Once you have your basic stores in, there's no need to go there unless you're going to change the address or the store name for some reason, which is not very likely. The same thing goes next on the, and you can see that we have euros in here. This is for, this app was really designed for the, uh, a company over in Europe. So it's got the euros in it. And when you, this is a custom app. So when you order a custom app, the dates 
and the times, or not the date and times, but the date and the money symbol can be edited to your country. So this is all going to be changed if you live in a country with a different a money symbol. These are all calculated fields up here. You cannot click in or edit these fields. They're all based on the entries that you put in the actual invoice portal. In the invoice portal, what you're doing is you're adding a product from the, from the list. And typically what happens when you put a product in from the list, uh, there are six stores. So there's a suffix on the end of each store. For example, this is store number two, S2, and on down through the line. So if this was sold by store two, the information when you're picking it for the product should match what you're doing for the store location. So if I were in store three, this would be store three. And also the customer should come be, be one of the customers from the list uh, that is in store three. Uh, you can see down here that there's a number of records and each one of them has a, a suffix on the end of it, which means that when you do the inventory and add it, there needs to be a record for your individual store. Uh, so if you add a singular item and you're the only person carrying that item, it would be only one listed here. And as with the uh, customer up here at the top, if you type in, let's go to a new line, if you type in a uh, letter of any kind, like for example, if I put in the letter R, anything in the R's would come up. In addition to that, if I uh, typed in RE, then it would have picked this set of records down here for these six items. So it's very easy to, to find items in very quickly in these records. If I backspace out the R and it blanks the field back out, it returns all the data so you can pick another record if you need to. The serial number is actually created in the purchase screen. When items are received, you put the serial numbers of the items that are received uh, so that when they are dispensed or invoiced, you can take the actual item and take the serial number off that item and add it to the line item as you're uh, di dispersing the thing to the client. Uh, so there's one, two, three so far now, the number of items, one, two, the number of items. Now, where does the dollar or the euro in this case come from as far as the, the cost? If you go back really quick and just pop this up, you'll see that the last numbers on this uh, pick list are actually the uh, value that it knows needs to go in this line. So if I look in this one, it's $27, so 27 or 27 euros would be put in here. Uh, if you want to change this, it's set up so that you can alter the, the value if you have to. Say, for example, there's a discount or a coupon that a client came in with, and it was for maybe $7 off, then this would be a $20 uh, item instead of 27 So you can easily change that. Uh, the question has been asked many times, why don't I just automatically take the numeric number from the uh, inventory or equipment area? And that would work, except for now you can't edit this. If you wanted to change it to $20, you could not do that because it's a calculated value <clears throat> like these fields up here at that point. So it needs to be an open, editable area. The next thing is the tax rate. There are some options with the tax rate. Uh, there is another screen that'll do a pop-up where you can alter the tax rate or add it. In fact, you could put, by adding a new record and putting in uh, 0 .00, now you have no tax as far as it's concerned on the picks list. So that would give you a blank value as far as the uh, record is concerned. So if I went back to sales, there would now be a 00, zero in there. And this would be for when you do not have a tax on an item or you're not taxing on an item. So you could just put that in there and it would replace it with no tax. In this case, we're going to put a 20 in there and it's going to automatically calculate the VAT for Europe or the tax for other countries. So that's an automatic uh, calculation. And the same thing goes for the, for the line total. The line total would be the sum of the tax and the cost of the items times the number of items bought. So you have one, two, three, four entries to put in and one from a drop down pick list here. So there's five items. This takes roughly four seconds per line, so it's not very slow to get it in there. You could pop it right in there. Uh, people, when they start doing this, learning it may be a little slow. I have some clients that claim they can do it in less than two seconds. They just go bing, 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 bing. If you don't have to put in a serial number, it's even, you know, 
that much quicker to not have to put it in. There'd be basically four entries that you'd have to put in per line. This icon at the end of the row will take you to the portal record, which will cover the portal separately later on. So you can get an idea what that's for. Uh, by the way, I said that you cannot do a uh, find in a portal row, but you can do it in the individual portal row record when you go into the portal. You can search through all the records for all portals throughout the entire database. Let's take a look at the payment screen. The payment screen works in this manner. The calculated values from the prior screen will come over to this area. The uh, purchase order ID or the PID will actually go in there uh, by itself. It's thrown in there by the system. And the next thing is the date, which is a drop down. In this particular case, this one uh, is displaying uh, the US dates that needs to be European. The amount is the green field, 3240. You'd put that in. Let's go ahead and do that. Type in the 3240. And you can see it'll say there's a balance of 3240. If you pay the entire balance by putting that in, it automatically zeroes out the balance. And how is it paid? In this case, let's say Visa. And what are the last four digits of the Visa? And that's important. Uh, very important, in fact, uh, I recommend that everybody uses either a check number, last four, or, or the full check number, and the last four of any kind of a credit card. Uh, my experience is with all the different databases that I write for people, that this can be vital information if you had to look back. If a client did something uh, where he canceled the order, you would be able to tell what credit card it was actually taken on by uh, contacting the credit card company. There's a place down here for pay comments if there's an issue or whatever. Uh, this is the payment for this invoice. Uh, on some apps or in some locations, this could be a running total of all the, uh, the uh, payments. This is just for this particular invoice that we're working with. And then there's an inventory status. This was added uh, basically to identify whether other stores have inventory stock within your organization where if you needed that item that was listed in the sales invoice, you could see the item if it had the uh, inventory item for that. And you'll notice that it's for all the inv uh, inventory items for all the stores in the entire app. So you can see that you can scroll quickly through here and find a certain item you're looking for to see if they have any inventory. And you can see from the top record that I'm going to get back up to, they're actually negative one here. And this one has 11 in stock balance and they have a low level of five. So you can see whether or not uh, they have a lot of stock in this particular chain in the that particular store. So if you needed one and you didn't have one, like this one says, I don't have this one yet. I, I'd either have to order it or ask the other store to send it to me. And the way this is done, you go ahead and do an invoice uh, like you're selling the item and the, the store that uh, uh, is sending you the item would do a uh, an invoice or a purchase order, and what happens, they cross-cancel each other. Uh, the invoice shows that you purchased it from them, and you put their store information in as, as far as the name up here, and then you would do a uh, purchase order to pay them back for the item that they sent to you. So that keeps your books all balanced as far as both inventory and money, as far as the value of things. Now, obviously, in this case, it would probably not be 27 it would probably be whatever the value actually is. So all uh, you need to know how to do that. So if you have any questions on this, go ahead and give me a, an email or questions that you might have. Uh, I will point out that in the sales, there are special uh, reports that are run, but they're all run from the main menu because in this application, uh, these are protected information between the stores. There's another version of this app that does not have that feature if you wanted it where everybody could see all the sales and every all the sales information and reports. Thank you for taking this video.